Hey, what's up? My name is Ryan and this is Friend Bear and we're going to tell a story called Outer Planet Inner Journey. And if you listen to this story, you're going to learn about astrology and creativity. Okay? All right. Uh, I may jump out. We may jump. We may jump around a little with our ideas. Uh, but if you just think about what we say as dots, uh, we'll try to connect the dots as we go along. Okay. Uh, and right now, locally, I just when I just clicked a button here, I just checked the local rising sign. It's eleven Pisces, which happens to be my south node. Uh, so there is the, the, a north node and a south node, and those are the. Uh, uh, those are the the points, the ends of the ellipse, basically. You know, uh, as part of uh, you know the cycle with with the moon and the sun, it's where the eclipses occur. Uh, so we just had a full moon today. Uh, the uh, the sun is in Leo, and the moon is in Aquarius, and they are exactly opposite uh, each other at nine degrees Leo and nine degrees Aquarius earlier today, and now the moon has moved to thirteen Aquarius already. Uh, the moon moves uh, fairly quickly through Aquarius. Uh, so one important note with all of this uh, space uh, stuff is that uh, all the orbits are elliptical. Uh, they are ellipses. They are not perfect circles. Everything is like an ellipse, you know, like an egg. Uh, you know, so the speed that, uh, you know, the, 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 the movement and the, the time and the speed is not the same it's not like an even circle, uh, you know, so when a planet is in a, a different, it will move at different speeds through different signs. And then another major factor uh, is uh, the length of the day. Uh, you know, it's summertime here, the days are really long. And, uh, you know, if it's wintertime, the days are short. And it depends where you live on the world. If you live near the equator, they're going to be about the same all the time. But if you live, uh, closer to the poles, there's going to be more variation. Uh, and this makes a huge difference, uh, you know, in the big four. And the big four is usually referred to as the sun, moon, sun and moon signs, the, and the ascendant and the midheaven signs. Uh, so the other thing, the reason I call this video Outer Planet Inner Journey, this story. That's that's our working title for this story. And we'd like to tell this story in different ways and to uh, talk about the what we're going to talk about in this story with different people uh, because we're curious about who else is having similar experiences. Uh, because I want to talk about an experience that I've been having over the last few years. Uh, pretty much, um, you know, it's kind of been, I feel that it's been kind of culminating. And my hypothesis uh, is that this has to do uh, mostly with Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus. Uh, and it has to do very much with the de specifically the degree zero degrees Aquarius, uh, which happens to be my moon sign degree. When I was born, the moon was at zero degrees Aquarius, okay? Uh, and earlier this year in the spring, Pluto was in zero degrees Aquarius for the first time in a long time, uh, was there for a few months, and now Pluto is retrograding, has retrograded back into Capricorn, currently at 28. Uh, and I've learned recently that I feel a good way to describe what Pluto does is keep people's ego in check. Um, like, if you if you are expressing too much ego, too much pride, uh, Pluto wants to put you in your place. Uh, it kind of, and depending on which sign Pluto is in, that expression will be different. Um, and I gotta say, I really enjoyed the time with Pluto in Aquarius. Uh, I felt so calm. Uh, that is one thing I'll say. Uh, I felt super calm. I felt like I could do anything. Uh, and the other thing. Um, but I, I felt like there was no rush at the same time. Like I, I felt, uh, you know, now that Pluto is moving backwards, uh, you know, it's, um, kind of been, 
having to go back and, you know, readjust some things. Uh, but it also has been just a very creative time, very creative summer, having Venus in Leo uh, for the whole summer. It's, it's just very creative. Okay, so uh, I wonder, do you hear any sounds uh, like uh, through your body? Uh, for example, um, do you hear uh, the the turn like hearing your own vibrations? Uh, do you hear your own vibrations? Um, uh, that is a question that I have for you, and if so, I, I you know I wonder when you hear them, you know, uh, or uh, so um, because. Uh, so I'm going to take my glasses off for a minute. You know, it's funny, like uh, this, so this, uh, I have this little story here. Uh, this is a great, great example related to Pluto and Neptune. So uh, I'm going to take my glasses off just to press, you know, let my eyes relax for a few minutes here. So I can just think about what I'm going to say without having to, without this, I cannot, you know, it's all very blurry. Uh, and I have Neptune on my ascendant in a sextile, uh, but I also have Pluto in the first house in my chart. Um, so it's, it's funny, like without my glasses, what I see is blurry. Uh, and a lot of times what I'll do is just take my glasses off and I will lose them. And it's kind of frustrating. Like, it's like, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, usually they're in my bed somewhere. And I'm just like, can't always find them. But then sometimes I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna find them. And like, I will like reach like into, like into a space that like, you don't even look, I just reach. And I just like reach right to the right spot without even like, uh, like, like thinking about it, say, oh, I'm gonna find them. And I just reach and like, I just somehow know they're know where they are. Like, I didn't know that I knew where they are. Uh, and a lot of times they're just in my bed. It's just like, it's just that I happen to reach the right spot. Uh, and sometimes I, I sit, I sit by the floor and sometimes they're over there. Just, but like, like it's frustrating when it happens, but for some reason, like, it, you know, so I, I call this the finder power. Um, and I believe that, uh, if you have Pluto, uh, strong in your chart, um, then you have the finder power as well. And when I say strong in your chart, like I would say it like if you have Pluto in the first house or if you have Pluto in an aspect to your ascendant, especially, uh, you know, or if you have Pluto in a 10th house, uh, which could be, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the whew, uh, yeah. Anyway, so the first house has to do with the physical body. Uh, and I think having Pluto in the first house, uh, you know, Pluto has is known to have a great perception uh, you know, able to, uh, perceive things, it, you know, so I think, uh, if you have Pluto in the first house, uh, and I, uh, you know, that there's a great perception and a great ability to, like, um, uh, find resources, uh, or, uh, like, that you have not had before, or that, you know, that you didn't know were there before, so I feel, I've been, like, curious about astrology for a long, long time, I've been, you know, into astrology for many years now, I have many years. I mean, I know people who have been into it a long time. I guess I got really, really into it uh, during the lockdown, uh, but I kind of got into it a few years before that too. So it's not that long, but so basically, but the thing is I've been learning really fast and I want to tell you how I've been learning so fast. Um, so the thing is, I, the way this started was a couple years ago. Uh, this is during the lockdown. I started hearing a ringing, right? Like a ringing. And at first I thought it was in my ears. I was like, what's up with my ears, right? Uh, and then as I like, I paid more attention to it, it was like a ringing, you know, like a vibration kind of. And it actually feels as if, um, it's, it actually feels as if it's like not in my ear, but like kind of like in the back of my head or the back of my spine, the back of the top of my spine or like the back of my head. It's uh, as if like, uh, you know, and I've like sprayed that when I take a shower, I spray the water like all up in my ears. Like I clean the, my ears out. Like every time I take a shower, I squirt the water in there. Uh, but I don't put anything in my ear. I, I do clean my ear in the, in the shower, but I don't like insert anything in there to do it. Uh, just aside from water. Um, you know, uh, I'm not, tr I'm not trying to get, you know, everyone, uh, you know, <laughs> your ears are very sensitive. So I just, please be careful with your ears, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, sound is very important and, uh, you know, sound occurs in waves, right? Uh, and 
as does energy uh, occurs in waves and waves is uh, essentially like an expression of movement and a, and a wave is something that you know sometimes you could hear a wave sometimes you could see a wave sometimes you could feel a wave uh, you could taste a wave there are all different ways where you could uh, senses where you could experience a wave and we know that the universe uh, is made with waves waves and particles right um uh and i okay so reflection so this is just a key word right here i want to throw in it's called ref the word is reflection i think this is a super important word related to astrology so a lot of you know just if anyone gives like because uh, you know it's not everyone is into astrology but i think that's because of a lot of uh um, pop stuff has gotten, you know, sort of invaded people's minds in a way. Like the best way to think about astrology is to think about astrology as a reflection. Uh, it's as if what is happening in outer space is a reflection of what is happening here on earth. And as if what is happening here on earth is a reflection of what's happening in outer space. Um, it's not so like, um, rather than saying like, this is causing that, I, you know, it's, uh, I just think, um, it's, there are some unknowns for sure. And that's why it's such a cool thing to get into, right? And I've been personally using astrology to help me with creative work, uh, especially like I'll choose certain times based on astrology to do the creative work. And I've seen better results in, you know, uh, you know, certain kinds of time, time, stuff like that. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so when I want to talk about the story, Outer Planet, Inner Journey, introduce the, the sort of the topic of the story, because I would love um, to discuss this with more people, uh, you know, inter, you know inter, in an interview fashion or like on, on your podcast and I, I or uh, when I'm able to uh, have a good setup to do do some interviews uh, for sure. Uh, anyway, so any way to have like a, a we have record a good conversation, uh, that could be cool. But I'm gonna try to introduce the story here. So the thing is, like, I have started to pay attention to this vibration a lot, right? Um, and what I have done, uh, there's uh, there's this website called AstroSeek, and on AstroSeek, uh, they have a tool called the Astro Clock. And you could start the Astro Clock, and you could basically see the rising sign changing over the course of the day. Um, so I'm going to take a minute to talk about the rising sign. Uh, so the rising sign. So, at, okay. So at sunrise, at sunrise, all right, the moment of sunrise in the morning, right at dawn, the moment of sunrise, the sun rises on the eastern horizon. Okay. At the if someone is born at the moment of sunrise, their rising sign degree will be exactly the same as the sun degree. For example, this morning, the sun was at nine degrees Leo. So right at that moment of sunrise, the, if they were born right at that moment of sunrise, they, uh, they were at rising sign nine uh, Leo, uh, you know, that is the moment of sunrise. And the sunrise and sunset are, are both sort of critical, you know, oh, inflection points, let's say in astrology, because many things change whether... Uh, someone is born at night or whether it's nighttime or daytime, uh, there are uh, a lot of things that change. Um, so, uh, uh, for, ex uh, the, the one I'll say, uh, just let me give you the opposite example is the sunset, right? Uh, so when the sun sets, uh, the rising sign is exactly opposite where, um, the sun is. Um, and so, that so if you're born right at sunrise then you'll have the sun in the first house uh, you, uh you're definitely uh, advocating for whole sign houses all the way uh you know uh anyway uh that's that's my opinion uh uh it just makes it easier so basically the way whole sign houses work is whatever your rising sign is that's your first house and then that your the next sign is your second house the next sign after that is your third house and so on and the sign before your rising sign would be your 12th house uh so anyway if you're born right at sunrise you're going to have the sun in your first house which uh, and the first house has to do with the physical body so there's if you have the sun in your first house you're going to have some some extra radiance because the sun is coming through you right um in my case i have pluto in the first house right so it's it's something different it's not it's not like the sun um and it's funny because they're kind of opposite in a way. Uh, you know, there uh, there are uh, 
I'm sure there's more stuff in outer space, but you know, in the, the you know, Pluto, uh, Pluto is further out than any of the other uh, planets that we, that we talk about so far uh, that we, you know, and uh, the other thing is that this, uh, our, you know, on Earth, we've been evolving, right? We've been evolving as a society and new things have been coming up in astrology uh, and also in outer space, there's been discovery of new astro of asteroids, new asteroids, uh, many, uh, you know, there's a, if you look at astrological chart, you can usually find, you know, they're, they're, they usually list about 20 asteroids, um, you know, such as like Eros, Vesta, Sappho, um, I'll have to, you know, I could get, there's, I would love to talk to someone about the asteroids because that, uh, is something, uh, that, that I'm really, uh, have gotten into is learning about the asteroids, uh, because you can totally, uh, recognize the aspects, uh, from this, I've been really feeling the aspects from the asteroids. I think the asteroids are a big part of life now, and uh, uh, each one represents um, kind of new things in our culture. Uh, and I think a lot of the things that have been happening related to like gender equality uh, have a relationship with the asteroids. Um, and so, uh, and I will say too, like uh, as far as creative work, the main uh, uh, you know been working on webmural.com. That uh, webmural.com uh, is is uh, is a website where uh, uh, where where each page is like a mural, but it's 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 a it's it's made with HTML and CSS. Um, so when um, uh, it just so and when I say creative work, that's kind of the creative work that I've been working on. Uh, but you may be like a musician or something. So like the, the whole like premise of this is that I'm trying to like just cross over some topics uh, that I haven't heard anyone talk about uh, these topics in a crossover way. Um, um, all right. So what, so what I started to do is as I would hear different sounds, like sometimes I'll hear a ringing and it will just last for a few seconds. And sometimes I will hear like a more like different kind of ringing. Like sometimes it would be like pleasant sound and sometimes it would be like sort of like a, an uncomfortable sound. Uh, and as I did that, I would look at that astro clock and I would say, okay, what is the rising sign degree at that moment? Um, you know, and, and then I would look to see like, okay, what aspects is the rising sign making, you know, and, and so on. Um, so, I did that over and over again, like all the time I was, I kept doing that. And like my desire, my desire to understand is so strong um, that like, I believe that this sense, uh, that this sense uh, that I, I'm calling it a sense because uh, uh, this seems the easiest way to describe it is, is coming through mostly as, as like a sound. Um, but I believe that I could hear the aspects happening throughout the day, every day. I just have to pay attention to it. And I could literally hear the sound right now. Uh, but because I'm talking, it's, uh, you know, I'm trying not to pay attention to it. Uh, but it's the full moon and the moon is in Aquarius. And when the moon is in Aquarius, like I am tapped in. Like I, like I, it's, I, I love when the moon is in Aquarius. I love, it to, I love when the moon is in Pisces even more because this is a, it's a bit calmer, I will say. Uh, but uh, the synchronicity is super, super high today. Uh, whenever the moon is in Aquarius, uh, the, I think the synchronicity is super high and it's a full moon. And also, you know, the synchronicity is super high. Uh, you know, it's super, I feel like if you've seen three, three, three today, that's no surprise at all, or any just number combinations, like just things happening in, in symmetry of some kind. Um, uh, anyway, so, uh, the, the planet, um, Uranus has uh is is the home uh is it where Aquari aquarius is at blah, blah, blah. uranus is at home in the sign of aquarius okay uh and uh uranus has to do with the electricity lightning bolts you know like lightning bolts a light bulb uh you know turns on the lightning bolt strikes uh and the thing uh and uranus has to do with surprises and disruptions uh, which can be good and bad. Surprises and disruptions could be good or bad or whatever. It's just, that's the thing. It's the nature of Uranus. It's full of surprises, but it's like lightning bolts, like the nature of a, like a, I feel like there's a great connection to electricity. And like, for example, like, um, I think that a lot of the, 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 
there's a lot of amazing electric guitar players who have Uranus and Scorpio uh, because and they, and your and Scorpio is an, is another is a sign where uh, uh, is a sign where Uranus does really well in is uh, is exaltation. Um, so uh, and also I have Uranus at 17 Scorpio. Um, so uh, my in my so I feel like uh, I have a lot of Uranus in in my astrology, uh, having the Moon in the fifth house at zero Aquarius and having uh, Uranus in Scorpio. In uh, you know uh, 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 so if you divide a circle by five, right? So this is another thing that I've been paying attention to a lot. Uh, uh, if you divide a circle by five. Uh, okay, I think I better back it up and just do a quickie about this really quick. So if you divide a circle by two, it is 180 degrees because a circle is 360 degrees, right? If you divide a circle by two it is 180 degrees. That is like uh, called this is called is an aspect called an opposition. It's like it's like uh, when someone is looking right at you is very intense, right? But it could be very good. You know, you could find a way, you know, it's kind of good. Like someone is looking right at you. It's intense. Um, uh, and you could, they, you could get along. But it's it, like just like in a harmonic sense, like I feel like the more you divide the circle, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the sort of the intensity of the aspect dissipates. Um, not, uh, you know, probably in some logar logarithmic way. Uh, but um, just because uh, in a lot of the stuff, just because uh, uh, a lot of stuff in nature works in a logarithmic way, uh, some kind uh, versus a linear way. Uh, so anyway, just uh, just to remember, so like just if you divide a circle by two, that's that's a, that's a that has a higher intensity uh, than if you divide a circle by three. Uh, so if you divide a circle by three, it still has a high intensity, just not quite as high as dividing it by two. Uh, so if you divide a circle by three, it's called a trine, and a trine is like. Like a trine, I'm gonna try and make a trine here with front bear. So it's like a trine. It's like we're both kind of heading in the same direction. It's it's easy. It's like it's like we are like in, kind of like we're both kind of going this way. It's, it, things just flow easy with a trine. Like a trine is very helpful to have. Uh, in uh, you know, um, like great. Like if you travel, like when the moon is in a trine with Neptune or something like that, that's awesome. You know, uh, uh, you know something like that. Uh, you know, or for like, uh, you know, he's trying to do like brain work, <laughs> like a moon uh, in a trine with Mercury or something like that, right? Uh, the moon has a big influence on all of us, you know, uh, or at least just say there's a reflection that the moon has that influence. Uh, you know, again, the word reflection, I think is super important. And I will also say that I think my voice sounds different um, lately, uh, the last few weeks here, uh, because of the, having this Mercury in Virgo. It's like, I'm like, uh yeah i think it's kind of awesome uh mercury loves to be in virgo and also mercury is really far from the sun uh usually like you know mercury uh like right now today uh mercury is at five virgo and the sun is at nine leo so that's uh 21 plus five so mercury uh so that's 26 degrees away from the sun uh, and mercury is uh in a home sign, one one of Mercury's home signs is Virgo. So this is uh, when it when a planet is in a home sign, the planet has a bit more authority. Uh, so like when Mercury is in Virgo or Gemini, um, Mercury is a, is a bit able to to help out more with the other planets because uh, it's like okay, like I got this, like you know something like that kind of feeling. It's a similar way like when the Moon is in Cancer, uh, the Moon is, you know is able to help out a, a bit more. Uh, it's kind of like the best expression of that planet is when they're home uh, or, uh, you know, sort of like the other best, uh, you know, another uh, best kind of expression is like the exaltation. Like each planet has like sort of like a, a, a home sign uh, or two and uh, exaltation uh, or two, maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, so anyway, that's the idea. So I, I just think this is a really great time for thinking outside of yourself. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just like, oh, I just like, uh, wow, it was like a full moon today. I'm just going to make sure there's no bad energy here. <laughs> just, <laughs> um, 
No, it's actually right now it's the butterfly. Earlier today, uh, earlier today, the, where, when the full moon occurred here, over here, the lunar day was called the snake. Uh, and that's, that's a, when the lunar day is the snake, I, I just try to, uh, you know, stay to myself. I eat spi it's good to eat spicy food, especially paprika, I, I believe. Uh, uh, I think the reason that it's good to eat paprika on, on this day, you know, kind of just like around the full moon, uh, leading up to the full moon, I think it has because it, it's good for your eyes and your blood sugar, and they say both of those are sensitive uh, on the, around the full moon. Um, of course, there's a lot of variation depending on which sign um, the full moon is in. But when the moon is in Aquarius, like uh, it, it's a great time for spicy food. So it's uh, so uh, anyway that this already passed. Now we're up to the butterfly. The butterfly just started, but the butterfly is like a much more like peaceful day. Uh, it's a very it's a really really great day for creative people. Um, I, when I was born, I was born on this day, the butterfly. I was born just after a full moon uh, as well. Um, so I, 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 I guess I have an extra affinity for this day. But I will say that um, there, there are a lot of cool lunar days. I'll talk about that some other time. But uh, anyway, this, uh, I think the rest of this week is going to be really nice. Uh, now that the full moon has happened, I, I see, I just like right at this moment, I just could hear a, a high pitch ringing just kicked in here. So I'm just going to get back to talking about this because this is really what I want to talk about the most and really what I'm curious about the most, uh, what other people are experiencing as far as like ringing or vibrations that they're hearing. Um, because basically like, um, so I kept looking when I hear a sound, uh, you know, I would look at, at the chart. I would look at the clock, right? The astral clock. And then after a while, I was like, okay, like, I, you know, from sounds I heard yesterday, I was trying to think like, okay, do I hear the same thing? Like, because every day, basically, like you're running through the same, uh, the rising sign, uh, you know, will be about the same, just like a few minutes different. Like, so if it's like, uh, just say, you know, um, you know, if it's like, uh, maybe it'll just be like every, th basically the rising sign is just like backing up a little bit, like every few minutes, uh, the same time the next day the rising sign will be just be like one degree different you know and over the course of the year like it goes around uh you know the whole everything in a whole circle right um because it because it always has to fit what i said about the sunrise and the sunset uh so like uh now it's like i said it's summertime the the rising signs that are occurring during the day are stretched out a lot longer than the rising signs that are happening at night because it still has to go through uh, it still has to go through all six signs during the day from the sunrise to the sunset and from the sunset to the sunrise. Uh, it still has to go the same, uh, you know, it still has to go 180 degrees in both those times, but when you have, but in with a different amount of time to do it. So it's got to travel uh, faster right now because it's summer. It's, so it's happening faster at night. Uh, and also uh, due to the elliptical orbits, um, there's even more variation than that because uh, the just the shape of the orbit is ca causing the planets to stay uh, in a sign for more or less time. Like for example, like the Pisces rising only lasts for about one hour. Uh, so if you ever like read something that says like a rising sign lasts for two hours, uh, every sign lasts for two hours, it's, it's, that's only, uh, you know, c correct, I guess, around the equator, uh, you know, uh, or could be correct. There's a lot of variation. It's not, it's not even correct there, I don't think. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it's just, that's just the approximation. But like, you know, the, right now, the, the, like the, um, you know, the, the, the rising signs happening during the day are like lasting for over two hours. Um, so anyway, uh, I think it's, I recommend listening. Uh, it, so I, I, I would recommend listening um, because the, the rising sign moves really quickly uh, through Aquarius and Pisces risings. I recommend listening during these times. And right now that's uh, around the sunset. So at the time that the, that the sun sets, it will be in Aquarius rising because Aquarius is a sign opposite to the Leo. So the sunset is when the sun is in the seventh house. The seventh house is, uh, you know, opposite the first house. Um, so anyway, uh, and, and there, the other thing that changes, you'll realize like, and I think this is super important for creativity or for, do, you know, for, for like what you're working on is uh, there is this imaginary point called fortune. And fortune has to do with the the uh, distance between the sun and the moon, and it's offset from the rising sign. So, right. So today was the full moon, uh, and uh, it's it's kind of awesome, like around the time of the full moon, because fortune is in the seventh house, uh, which I mean, like. 
I mean, fortune is just going to help in whatever house fortune is in. Um, so, but one cool thing about the full moon is you can catch charts with fortune in the seventh house. Uh, it's pretty easy. And uh, the other, uh, on the other end of that is around the new moon, you can catch charts. Uh, I really like, uh, I've been finding great results with fortune in the first house. Uh, really cool. And also, I uh, I feel that fortune in the 12th house is, is really beneficial as well. It kind of like, if you, whatever, if you have any bad placements, like, it's in a, you know, uh, uh, if you have any placements that, you know, for example, like, like, uh, like Mars in the 12th house is kind of challenging because like uh, you're kind of like Marsing, you're, you're like fighting against yourself in a, in a little bit of a way, I think. Uh, but if you have like fortune in the 12th house, it's, it's going to help you out. So like it could kind of like offset some um, some stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, like uh, there's just... Uh, so as, as you move through the lunar month or through the month, uh, fortune is going to be moving through the signs differently and because the calculation is different at night during the, versus during the day so like basically like during the day when the cycle starts with the new moon it's like fortune starts in the first house and then as the moon like moves away from the sun it's like going to, like then like a few days later it's going to be in the second house third house fourth house uh you know uh fifth sixth seventh you know and that's the full moon that's keep you know eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, by the time of the new moon. And the thing is at night, it's the same thing is happening, but it's, it's flipped. So, uh, at, in, when the cycle starts for the new moon, fortune is, uh, you know, uh, it's going to start kind of like in the 12th house, 12th, 11th, uh, 10, nine, you know, uh, eight. So it's, I think it's also really good. I find this really easy. Uh, I really love, especially, uh, to catch the a Gemini rising with Pisces in the tenth house, I love that. I feel like that is a the flow it really able to get into a flow state there, really able to do amazing work during the Gemini rising, especially when there is fortune in Pisces in the tenth house. Because uh, right now we have Pisces or sorry Neptune in Pisces already, so any Gemini rising uh, is going to have Pisces or uh, Neptune in the tenth house which is really great for creative work. The 10th house has to do with career. The 10th house, uh, you know, the midheaven is, uh, well, is, uh, um, can be, the midheaven can be like, uh, is, is near the 10th house. It's not always in the 10th house. It could be like around, the, it depends where you are in the earth, uh, how far it could get. Uh, uh, but usually like in the, most of the charts that I've looked at, it's in the 9th, 10th or 11th house. But I think it could actually be like in the 8th house, depending where you live, you know, if you live really close to the poles. But anyway, like basically like, uh, uh, the midheaven, uh, you know, is the the top of the sky. Like the midheaven is where the sun is in the middle of the day. So, like, if you, uh, you know, pay, so paying attention uh, to like where the tenth house is, uh, you know, is is really great to have um, a positive situation happening in the tenth house. Um, so, for so for example, like having the sun in the tenth house is is uh, uh, it's pretty positive to have the sun in the 10th house because the sun, you know, it's going to help, help your career. Uh, um, so, you know, stuff like that, like I've been getting into and also the pay a lot of attention to the fifth house, which is the house of creativity um, to where to where the fifth house is. Uh, and it totally like the nature of ideas that I will come up with uh, during the different rising signs. You could really tell the different the difference of uh, from the fifth house. So uh, and I do a lot of work with templates. Uh, and it turns out, um, so I found that like um, a lot of times when there's fortune in the fifth, uh, uh, that will get used as a lot of, the te that will be like a lot of things will be made from that template. Uh, for example, the way the web mural works, it's like um, every web, each web mural is a, is, is a, like a page on webmural.com slash whatever. And um, you could check, there's a mural called Butterfly. If you, for example, if you go to webmural.com slash butterfly, right? But Butterfly, each mural is also a template on GitHub. Uh, and if you want to find the templates, you can uh, find web mural on GitHub to find to find the templates. But, uh, it's, but it's kind of wild, like, um, because it got so into this, like focusing on the degrees, I did get a bit obsessive about le like learning about this and whatever. But I think it just shows like that, that like having the Pluto in the first house, like the determination to like understand something, you know, is so high uh, that like, and this thing about listening. So like, I believe that you can hear the aspects happening if you pay attention to them and think when to do it. So I think a great time to do it, uh, you know, throughout, throughout the summer is, is just after sunrise. 
uh, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, while it's still Leo season, that's going to have a, a um, that's going to be during the Aquarius rising. Uh, and I just think it, uh, and, and it is very heavily aspected. The Aquarius rising, it has a lot of aspects, um, because, uh, because with, uh, because they have Venus in the seventh house, um, uh, and right now the nodes are in Aries and Libra. Uh, you know, there's just like a lot of ass. I recommend listening to that time because when I listen, it's basically like a lot of times when the Aquarius rising, I could be asleep. And the, uh, when the Aquarius rising starts, it will wake me up like that. When the zero, uh, 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 like I could just tell like when, like it literally will wake me up the moment that the rising, the local rising sign changes to zero degrees Aquarius. Like it literally wakes me up. And that was happening like a lot, like, um, you know, at night. And now it's like around sunset. I'm usually still awake. Uh, at, the, at that time, I sometimes do go to sleep like right, right early because I try to wake up early. I really like to, to do, I think I do my best work very early in the morning. I like to wake up before sunrise if I could do it, but it's, it's uh, my sleep has been all off lately because the days are so long uh, and it's been so hot. It, you know, it's not been, uh, you know, it's it kind of limiting. Like you got to be a little bit more easy on, easy on the computer and whatever. Um, cool. So uh, have I, friend Mayor, what do you think? Have I gotten into this like enough to, to sound uh, like sort of like a like someone that other people would want to talk talk about? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's still working. Uh, so, uh, ah, okay. Yeah. The, all right. So, uh, friend bear, I I've been trying to figure out friend when when. Uh, you know, what is Frambear's Bear's rising sign? So if you have a guess, I think is a good, uh, if you have a guess for uh, Frambear's Bear's rising sign, I think you should drop the, uh, I think you should drop your guess in the comment. That'd be awesome. Uh, I have a lot of guests myself, uh, but I will say like, I do feel like, uh, I, I will give you one clue. Uh, he's wearing an aquamarine turquoise bandana. And the thing is, I don't know for sure what his rising sign is, but I feel like there is a connection to the color, this color turquoise and this color aqua or aqua, aquamarine. Uh, uh, there is a connection between the, this uh, aquamarine color uh, and and a sign that I believe is strong in his chart. I don't know, don't know which house, but I believe uh, you know that it, it could be like a prominent house. The pro the more prominent houses are the first house, the tenth house, the seventh house. Um, I, I would say those are the most prominent houses in, in a chart. And there's also the fourth house. Uh, a lot of times other people won't see the fourth house. Uh, it won't, you know, it won't be obvious to other people, but the fourth house is very present in your own, uh, you know, the fourth house is, uh, is like the bottom of the underworld. <laughs> there is on web mural, uh, web mural.com slash MC mural and a web mural.com slash IC. There's a mural about the MC is short for mid heaven, uh, and I see uh, it's, it's short for uh, whatever, you know whatever whatever's down there. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like uh, um, I forget. <laughs> uh, is there are Latin words? Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so I highly recommend listening to the Aquarius rising. And when I say listening, I mean like listening to your own vibrations. You could also listen to stuff outside in the world. Uh, for example, like I hear a lot of times if you have a window open and you have, if you have, uh, you know, trees near you, you may hear some birds, right? And I find that like a lot of times uh, around the time that like, um, there's a really like, like a sweet transit to Venus, for example, uh, like say like the rising sign is in a trine to Venus. Uh, that will be like the kind of moment where there'll just be like a really cool, like nice breeze and the birds like just start kind of like s singing like something really melodic, like happened to be at that time. Uh, I, I, and like it, I've witnessed this happen a lot of times that the birds are, are sort of reflecting the aspects as well. So it's like, I believe we have birds singing in us, you know, we're all a reflection. Uh, so I believe, uh, so at first I thought that I was like hearing something like with my ears, but I now believe that it is just, I'm literally like my, that it is just, I'm sensing a vibration it's coming through and I'm perceiving it as sound because, you know, we're human uh, and that's how I'm perceiving it. Um, I also would say, uh, yeah, so, 
Ah, the other thing I want to talk about a lot that has been a huge part was that whole thing with the fives. So let me just uh, get to at least five. I think I should at least get to five. Uh, so when I mentioned that if you divide a circle by three, uh, it's a trine. Uh, okay. Uh, but if you divide a circle by four, let's see, this is a, you know, a shape of four, I guess. Um, and it's funny, the, the number four, Uranus, uh, actually has, a uh, like if you're making a Uranus talisman, a four is a, like, I think a, a like a, like I would consider like, uh, uh, like a, like this kind of like a turquoise square, that is a very like Uranus kind of, um, like I feel like a turquoise square is a very Uranus talisman for some reason. There's like a connection to the number four. Uh, and if you look at the numerology of the word, uh, Uranus, it, it is a four. Uh, if you add up the letters, uh, uh, so for some reason, you know, that, and I think it's kind of, um, you know, what comes in fourth? Well, there's four seasons, right? And the whole, uh, the whole astrology, like the uh, Western astrology is based on the four seasons. Um, but anyway, like if you divide, uh, a circle by four, you get 90 degrees and like 90 degrees, it's, it's like a turning point, uh, it's a challenge. It could be an opportunity, uh, but like, you're going to have to like act to do something like, like, it's not like it's easy, like a trine. You know, it, 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 you may have some opportunities, but it may not, it may not be like, like, like the opportunities that you were like looking for. But if you like work a little bit, you can like, if you like meet the challenge, you'd be good. But like, if I was like trying to pick a good time to do something like, um, you know, I will try to, what I will try to go for is the trines and the kintiles. So a kintile, uh, is the next one. If you, is, is if you divide a circle by five. So if you divide a circle by five. Uh, you, it's 72 degrees. 72 times 5 is 360. And I, this is like the artistic angle. So uh, my favorite time of the month, for example, is when... So right now, um, right now, Neptune is in Pisces at 27 degrees Pisces, okay? And, you know, I've kind of practiced, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, now, to, you know, is anyway, like just, uh, just, uh, when I say quintile or Q, I use, I like to use the word, the letter Q for short for quintile. Uh, and I used it, have been using a five pointed star to display it. Cause that's what it is. It's a five pointed star. If you visualize it. Right. Um, so basically like when I say Q, I didn't, I'm just mean that, um, uh, one planet is, uh, either 72 degrees away, uh, uh, that would be one fifth of the circle or two fifths of the circle, which would be 144 degrees away. You know, so anyway, whatever, you don't need to know the exact numbers. It's just like a fifth of a circle or two fifths of a circle, right? That is a really cool angle. It could happen across signs that, um, so, so I'll give the, my best example, uh, uh, is when my favorite example of the month has been happening lately because, because Neptune has been in Pisces. It's going to be in Pisces for a while still, uh, um, especially because moving backwards in Pisces now. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, so 21 Leo, right? 21 Leo. 21 Leo is, is Q with Neptune, okay? Uh, so it's two-fifths of a circle away. Uh, and so if you pay attention the next time, so right now the moon is in Aquarius, but around the new moon uh, in about two weeks, uh, the moon is going to be in Leo. And I highly recommend saving the time when the moon is in Leo, uh, especially like around like from like, uh, especially around when the moon is in like 20 degrees Leo, 21 degrees Leo, 22 degrees Leo, 23 degrees Leo. Those early 20 Leo degrees are going to be really awesome for creative work. Uh, it's, uh, so I'm just going to call that out as a really awesome time to do some creative work. It's going to be around the new moon, uh, the, the Leo new moon, uh, especially when the moon is in the, the, the early 20 degrees. Uh, so because, because of this, uh, because of a few things. Uh, so I just say like 21 degrees because, uh, 21 Leo is Q with Neptune and Neptune is exalted in the sign of Leo. Uh, so that is another huge factor because this will happen. There was five points on that star, right? So 21 Leo and it's kintile to 27 Pisces, nine Gemini, 
Uh, so I kind of just think like, okay, it's two signs more plus 12. Uh, so if you start with nine Gemini, right? It's nine Gemini, uh, you know, uh, so 72 degrees later would be 21 Leo. Uh, and then 72 degrees uh, more from that. Oh my gosh. It's like, uh, it's so hard to remember, I gotta say. But it's, uh, anyway, like you don't need to remember. It's just because you could see, view it on, uh, uh, most charting software will have a way for you to view the, 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 the quintile aspects. I just want to say this is an amazing aspect. I think it's super overlooked, um, uh, super overlooked. And I do think it's kind of funny. I think it's funny that they ref have referred to the aspects as major and minor aspects. I actually love this because it shows their relationship to music. And what I've been talking about is all this frequency stuff, all the stuff with the waves. I'm telling you there is a relationship with music. And in the same way, it is not like one, it is not to say like a, in a, in a, on a piano, playing a major note versus a minor note, they both have their own sound, right? The, the, the one is not better than the other. Okay. Uh, it is, just that the minor notes just have like a different essence, you know? So they're, uh, you know, so anyway, like, uh, however you want to call it, like, um, you know, I have in my experience have been, uh, had great, great, uh, uh, success with, uh, with Q aspects, quintile aspects, right? So I highly, highly recommend this. Uh, so I'm just calling out there, regardless of what, like what your sign is, um, just around the new moon is a great time to do creative work anyway, uh, because the sun and the moon are in a conjunction, uh, which is if you divide a circle by one, it's called a conjunction. It's like, um, you know, if you meet someone in person, you're in the same place. Two planets are in the same place. Uh, that's called a conjunction. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's in, in this, uh, you know, saying in this like fractal harmonic way I'm talking about it is, you know, be the most powerful because it's instead of it's divided by one, you know, then next power, next most intense would be like the opposition uh, and so on. And usually like conjunctions uh, or con like a lot of, you know, in astrology, like conjunctions are used a lot to uh, as inflection points. OK, so like one like inflection point that I was looking at was, uh, you know, um, like, like, I guess it was a few years ago, like two years ago, uh, last year, last year in 2022, Jupiter uh, had a conjunction with Neptune and Pisces. Um, and this year, uh, like now, right now, Jupiter is uh, applying to a conjunction with Uranus in, in Taurus. Uh, so anyway, like, so those are like things that, uh, you know, those are like, astrologers would call these inflection points for, uh, for, for sure. Uh, and like another, like, for example, like, a, you know, another really great time to like start something uh, you know, it's like with, I, I think having Venus on the ascendant is really great. Uh, I think Venus, uh, you know, uh, and then like the thing is like, uh, this theory of octaves, right? So like there is this theory of octaves where I've heard like, um, where I've heard people say like, uh, yeah, um, I was like, uh, okay, right, we're at 47 minutes. I heard that 47 is the most common random number. What was up with that? Okay. Um, <laughs> my sister found that, found that out. Uh, uh, okay. So yeah, I'm trying, I wonder, like, I feel like something changed in what I've been hearing. So I wonder if the rising sign has changed. Aries yet because when I started it was that uh, uh anyway uh it may have just changed actually because when I started it was at 11 Pisces we've already gone 47 minutes uh just uh, but that's my logic working up but I did hear a change uh so anyway uh, I don't want you know anyway so it's just like I just like wonder that stuff all the time I just try to guess the rising sign I think that the Aries rising uh, you know has started um because I just all of a sudden feel a little bit different. Uh, the thing, so the thing is, wherever the rising sign is, um, wherever the rising sign is, you're going to feel it in your physical body. So like a lot of times now, it, like, so like I was really enjoying the Pisces rising a lot, uh, especially like last year, especially when, you know, when Saturn was in Aquarius. Uh, but now like the sat now that, um, Saturn is in Pisces, like, you know, I've been tired a lot, uh, you know, during the Pisces rising, uh, you know, today, uh, I think I had a lot of, had a lot of too much caffeine today. Uh, it's actually, uh, now that it's the butterfly, now that the butterfly has started the, they say that this is the day where the blood regenerates in the body and is highly recommended to drink milk. 
uh, turmeric, pepper, uh, all really good for the blood. Anything that's good for the blood is good today because the blood is the day where the blood regenerates and, uh, you know, uh, fennel, uh, you know, uh, too. Uh, but you know, so I, I had a big glass of milk with turmeric and black pepper in it. And the thing is like, I got to say like, um, I would love to have a conversation to, with someone about plutonic snacks <laughs> because like, or just like the idea, like, uh, because of when I have Pluto in the first house, like, 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 uh, when you have, when someone has Pluto in the first house, uh, there's sort of like a regenerative quality. Uh, if Pluto has a regenerative quality, uh, like it will always find a way to regenerate in some way. Uh, and, uh, it's just like, like, for example, like dark chocolate, I would call that a plutonic snack because it's so, it's so mysterious yet it's like packed with nutrition, you know, but not only like dark chocolate, like you could like have like dark chocolate with like uh, jalapeno powder on it, uh, you know, uh, something like that. It's like just adding like, 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 uh, I have like all these spices, uh, you know, like cinnamon, uh, you know, like jalapeno powder, cumin, uh, ginger, like I'm always just putting like these like spices on stuff uh, just to like, and, and I love how it feels in my brain. Some of them like really kick in the brain, the spices like that. And so, uh, you know, uh, it's something I'm really into is like spices. Like I, I, I love using spices in different ways that I've been paying attention a lot to like uh, the different lunar days and oh, there's so, and the sign where the moon is in has a big effect on like what's kind of is good to eat or not. Uh, and I'm really happy because the second half of the lunar cycle, I like the, the, I think it's way easier to eat in the second half of the lunar cycle. Um, I'll just say as a basic thing, uh, I think the first half of the lunar cycle when the moon is waxing is really good for eating fresh food. Whereas, uh, it's important to eat fresh food and you kind of have to take a little bit better, pay attention more to your physical health. But after the full moon is a little, your body is like a little bit more, uh, you know, it's, it's better time to, you could, it's, uh, there's more forgiving, like what you could eat, you know, whatever. And you kind of like need to, need to eat like, uh, more uh, differently, I guess, but everyone is different. I, of course, everyone is different with, with, you know, with what you eat and what you eat is very personal. You are what you eat, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Fremer likes spices too, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, so it's, um, so, all right. So. Let's just go a few more minutes here. Uh, let's see, did I cover everything that I wanna cover just to give, yeah. So anyway, you can hit me up, right? Like I'm gonna drop some links in the description. Please hit me up, please like the video uh, and please let me know if you'd like to speak with me uh, or Friend Bear. And drop a comment if you have a guess for Friend Bear's rising sign. Uh, and what else, what else, what else, what else, huh? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, you know, like, I, I hope that, um, I hope, because I, I know that, like, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. I've watched and listened to way more YouTube videos than I've made. Um, and I just got to say, like, I want to say thank you for watching this video. I know that a lot of people, um, you know, everyone, or I know that everyone you know, uh, has their own unique individuality. And I just, um, there's so much cool stuff happening in the world. And I just like, uh, pl please drop a comment or something. I just, I uh, think it's so cool to connect with people uh, like all over the world. Uh, the way that I originally got into astrology was because, um, I was studying universe. I was, I'm very like a, like, I like to do my own research. I, I like to uh, learn about things like on my own. I'm just naturally like very, uh, you know, good learning, um, very, or like to learn. Like, uh, you know, I, I don't like to re listen to other people's instructions. I just, I just like to do, like have to do it my own way. But, um, that, but I come up with some really cool methods. Like I don't, I would love to know if anyone else has come across this thing with the, the, the vibrations. That's, that's why, um, uh, you know, so it's just, uh, I wonder like what other people have come up with. Cause I think it's, it's really cool. You know, just, it's just cool to share what people are come up with. Um, uh, you know, just, uh, just, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and just like everyone has, I will say this also, like everyone, um, it's just the idea of numbers. I think everyone has a different relationship with numbers. Uh, and I think that that is something that I'm really curious about is different people's relationship with 
numbers because like I know when some people like see certain numbers or hear certain numbers they have a certain impression of those numbers um and I've been doing some uh like so creative that I had to at some point I I I didn't like do this out intentionally, but I started coming up. I, I basically followed this path I, where I was using a creative constraint uh, to help um, create ideas that were more compelling. Uh, and I would love to talk about uh, the, this path of creative constraints because, um, and also like when, when, when and how to break out of them. Uh, you, you know, so I have a really cool story about uh, creative constraints uh, that, that are used, uh, uh, you know, that, that, um, they've been used with webmural.com. Uh, and also like the idea with webmural.com, the idea is I'm, uh, well, so the idea with webmural.com is, it's meant to be like a movement. It's, it's a movement is, uh, you know, so it's just, uh, just, uh, what you see there is just, uh, um, you know, it's just what's there now, but I hope that there's much, much more there in the future. It's, there's so many ideas. Uh, and the, but the cool thing is that, uh, with webmural.com, uh, because each of the murals uh, is a git is on GitHub as its own repo, uh, there's a timestamp for the birth uh, for the, the for the I've been using the initial it's called the initial commit uh, been using that as uh, like a birth time for a mural and been actually seeing that um, the uh, like. Uh, seeing like from the mural you can see the expression of the astrology in the mural is really cool so that is like kind of like I, this is kind of caused me to like pay attention to this vibration so much it's because uh, you know it, uh, I want wed mural to, to spread uh, and uh, I want to talk to I want to find out more about this like I my uh, you know been on a quest my whole life to understand the world uh, you know so so it's like as as many of us are um, and uh, I just think it's so cool um, I believe that y'all, if you just pay attention, uh, if you pay attention, uh, like you probably may, many of you may already be hearing sounds already, uh, and believe it or not, like it, it will match up to the transits to the rising sign, uh, or the transit with that, with the, the MC. So I hope you give it a try. I would love to hear what you say. I just, I'm going to just summarize, uh, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to just say a few good times that I, that I think are really good to do this. Um, so I, I uh, and also really good for creative work as well. Uh, so anyway, I think it's really good to try during the Aquarius rising to listen. I, th uh, I also will say that the, the Pisces rising is a really uh, sweet time as well, uh, especially like uh, the, end, the right now, the end of the Pisces rising, like near the end of the Pisces rising, especially because um, you will have a conjunction with Neptune uh, in the first house. So I feel like this is a really this feels really good. A conjunction to Neptune. There may there there's a lot of confusion there. There is you may be confused as you approach Neptune. You will feel confusion, but it will feel good. You will feel good. Uh, and I, so I think if you just like pay it, if you watch like the rising, you don't like like watch. It's kind of what what's kind of a good way to do it is to like okay take a quick look like okay I see that these planets are here and there 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 and they say okay I'm a, okay the rising sign starts I'm gonna lay down and listen I'm gonna lay down and listen and try to like try to guess what I'm what I'm hearing uh, and remember there's there's um, there's asteroids as well uh, for example like uh, Chariklo is at eleven Aquarius right now uh, and um, uh, I've, I mentioned that because it's in a cancel to my Venus. It's, uh, my Venus is five Cancer, so uh, you know it's, I've been. I really like. I'm really been feeling that Chariklo in eleven Aquarius a lot. Um, uh, also, uh, Uranus. I think that the Kintiles or uh, the cues to Uranus are. Uh, you can hear them. Uh, so, it, so, so also during during the Pisces rising, you'll have the midheaven in Sagittarius. So, uh, the very late degrees of Sagittarius are in a Q. Uh, they're in a tr they're in a in a aspecting the nodes and also Uranus, uh, uh, two fifths of a circle away. So, a Q. Uh, yeah, you want me to divide by six? Well, do we have time for that? It's 58 minutes already. Okay, so if you divide a circle by six, it is similar to a trine. It's called a sextile. 
but it is the the the, the strength of it is a little bit different. Uh, it's, it's, you will have some of that easiness, but rather than being in the same element, there'll be two different elements. Uh, but yes, a sextile is very positive. Uh, but uh, I would say for creative work, sextiles for sure, for sure, great. Uh, I think great to have. But I, I, I would want it to call it the most um, the trine and the and the quintile, the Q. Um, the I've also uh, would like to learn more about the septile. I I do have. Uh, a bit of them uh you know I, I get into that too but uh in I ha where i've been using it i don't actually have a great way to see them uh visualization for that so uh that's the, the thing is i, I will I, I will leave you th with that question um because i, I want to do another uh, I, uh another video about the aspects uh so i'm going uh i'd like to do that uh like uh, you know a, a little bit more in depth um but if you think about if you divide a circle by seven, eight, or nine, uh, and what do you get? And the thing is, uh, when you divide a circle by seven, it's the only one number that it doesn't divide evenly. So that is, you know that is a wonder right there. Uh, and um, you know the if you divide a circle by eight, it's called an octile, uh, and it's sort of you know similar thing. It's like a like a, cha a little bit of a challenge, but you know less less you know at like a if you divide it by four, but just like a less harmonic strength. Um, and okay, if you divide a circle by nine, what's that? 40, four, oh yeah, 40 times nine is 360. So uh, it's called a novile. Uh, I, I have not, I would like to get more into learning about these because I believe there's something to them too. Uh, uh, so, so if you would like to talk to me about uh, these aspects, like totally down to talk about these aspects, totally down to like, give some advice to any artist who is like trying to figure out like when is a good time to like record an album or something like that or go on tour it's like i couldn't believe it like uh uh like it's funny like biba i love biba doobie her music the uh she played in new york last night and she's playing again tonight I, it's like uh i think the show tonight is going to be way better but that's just, i don't know i wasn't there but anyway like i just say like for example like uh, i just think uh Usually, like, right before the full moon, I try to keep to myself. Uh, and then after the full moon, it's cool. <laughs> but anyway, like, uh, yes, yeah, just over an hour. Okay, I think this is good. Just uh, let's just see how. I don't even know. We're going to see how this is going to come out. So you want to say peace out? Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks again for thanks again for watching. Uh, thank, thanks again for watching. And I hope this is cool. Uh, you know, I hope I hope to, to hear from you or hopefully, like, this uh, makes you... Uh, uh, you know, just keep an open mind with all this stuff. And, um, I think you'll be good. And also just, I, like, I just hope you enjoy the video and I hope you uh, in, enjoy the rest of your moon cycle. Definitely pay attention for that new moon is going to be a great, that new moon, uh, you know, uh, in Leo is going to be a great, great for creativity. So, I uh, so enjoy.